Randasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanjina Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasade Kaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're continuing to read Upadesh Amrita. We're on now today we're going to begin text number three. Utsahan nischa yaddaryat Utsahan nischa yaddaryat Tat tat karma pravartanat Tat tat karma pravartanat Sangat chagat sato vrite Sangat chagat sato vrite Shadbi bhakti prasidyati Shadbi bhakti prasidyati Utsahan By enthusiasm Nischayat by confidence, by confidence. Dairyat. Dairyat. by patience, patience. Tat -tat karma Tat -tat -tat various activities favorable various activities. wait various activities favorable for devotional service Pravartanat by performing Sangatyagat by giving up the association of non-devotees. Sati. Sati. Sata. Oh, sata. Sata. By the great previous acharyas. Vrata. Vrate. By following in the footsteps. Should be, be by these six, six. bhakti, devotional service, service. prasidyati, advance of advance or become successful. So translation: There are six principles favorable for the association of pure devotional service. One, being enthusiastic. Two, with endeavoring with confidence. Three, being patient. Four, acting according to regulative principles such as Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, hearing, chanting, and remembering Krishna. Five, abandoning the association of non-devotees. And six, following in the footsteps of the previous Acharya. These six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service. So we heard in the first verse about controlling the senses and becoming a spiritual teacher, taking disciples. And then the second verse we heard about the items which were harmful which were obstacles in our devotional service and now Rupa Goswami is describing the things which are favorable which are helpful for our devotional service he said these six things assure the complete success of devotional service so very important items which we want to cultivate and we notice also that abandoning the association of non-devotees that was also mentioned in the previous text right we heard about jhana sangha association with worldly people so both texts they talk about the importance of association 
being very careful how who we associate with and the, the, then in text 4 we'll hear about how to associate with devotees but first of all the the lesson is to avoid the non-devotees minimize the contact with those people who are not devotees and best is to keep away from them we don't want to hear from them the jana sangha very harmful for our devotional service and if we can avoid the association of non-devotees then it's very helpful for our devotional service if you associate with them it will pull you down and if we can avoid their association it's an opportunity to elevate ourselves to bring ourselves up in devotional service so association is so important right We're better to be in a cage of fire better to be in a metal cage of fire rather than to have to live with non-devotees better to be embraced by a tiger <laughs> rather than have to be with people who are against the devotional service it can be very painful sometimes working people have jobs you have to work with people who are not devotees it's quite a challenge you have to associate with them you have to work with them be with them so devotional service requires that we're very careful about who we mix with and where we go even the devotees were in Vrindavan and Prabhupada was very concerned where are the devotees if they were not in the temple where are they what are they doing Prabhupada didn't like that devotees would just go out and go around and visit different temples he said we have our temple better you stay here in our temple you don't need to go to all these other temples of course sometimes we go just for the sake of seeing the deity there in these temples but we have to be careful sometimes you go to these temples and you know they they see people coming there naturally they will they will talk to you where are you from what are you doing all of this they want to cultivate devotees and Prabhupada saw sometimes devotees would leave Iskon and go to his god brothers temples go into the Godiamat or something so that was very discouraging for Prabhupada he he didn't like to see that we work so hard to bring people to Krishna consciousness we bring them to Krishna consciousness and then something after they come to Krishna consciousness then they go to some other temple they thought that's a great waste of our energy we spend so much time and we shed so much blood to make a devotee to bring someone into Krishna consciousness and after they come if they go away and join some other temple then it's a great waste of our energy and naturally we feel very Dis discouraged, disappointed. So Prabhupada uh, wants us, we come to Iskand, he wanted us to be chaste, to stay, to stay in the Krishna consciousness movement. Don't go here and there. Uh, 
Okay, so we'll read Prabhupada's purport. Devotional service is not a matter of sentiment, speculation, or imaginative ecstasy. <laughs> its substance is practical activity. Srila Rupa Goswami in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu has defined devotional service as follows. Right? What's the verse? Right. Uttama Bhakti or unalloyed devotion unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, involves the rendering of devotional service in a way that is favorable to the Lord. Right? Who who what are some examples of people doing service doing service to Krishna which is unfavorable? Who is doing unfavorable service? Kamsa. Kamsa huh? Sishupal. These people, right. They are also remembering Krishna or they're talking about Krishna, but they're very, Sishupal is very envious. And Kamsa, he's always wanting to kill Krishna. And so they're always thinking of Krishna, but they're thinking of him in a, in a negative manner not in a favorable manner. So devotional service should be favorable. This, this devotional service should be free from any extraneous motive and devoid of fruitive karma, impersonal jnana and all other selfish desires. So this is pure devotional service. No desire for gain, right? Prabhupada said devotional service means finish up your business. In business we look for something, to get something. But devotional service is not a business. We simply work for the pleasure of Krishna. And we don't, all, we don't even desire liberation. And Lord Chaitanya also teaches us not to desire liberation, right? What's the verse? Right. Lord Chaitanya in Shikshastikam said, I don't want wealth. So he doesn't want any gain. Fruit of, he doesn't want followers. He doesn't want to be glorified, praised by nice songs. And he, he, he doesn't even mind... Uh, to take birth again and again. He simply wants service, birth after birth. So that is pure devotion. We don't even care about liberation. We don't even care about getting out of this world. We simply want service. And if we have service to Krishna, then we're not in this world. So this is the idea to to think about giving service to Krishna. And that is actual liberation. That is not in the material world. So bhakti is a sort of cultivation. As soon as you say cultivation, we must refer to activity. Cultivation of spirituality does not mean sitting down idly for meditation, as some pseudo-yogis do. Uh, such idle meditation may be good for those who have no information of devotional service. And for this reason, it is sometimes recommended as a way to as a way to check distracting materialistic activities meditation means stopping all nonsensical activities at least for the time being devotional service however not only 
puts an end to all nonsensical mundane activities, but also engages one in meaningful devotional activities. So Prabhupada likes devotees to be active, to be engaged in working for Krishna. Tamal Krishna Goswami told us, he said, Prabhu, when Prabhupada would come, Prabhupada would, would want to know, how many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How many properties have you acquired? And if you say, oh Prabhupada, we're just here, we're just thinking of Krishna. <laughs> that, that is not what Prabhupada wanted to hear. Prabhupada wanted results. He wanted to see results. And results are there when we say, how many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? And how many properties have you got? That is a sign that the preaching is healthy. If you say, oh, we're, we're so happy here thinking of Krishna. <laughs> the books, they're in the book room. We never, made, we never distributed any books. and We don't have any new devotees. There's nobody to be initiated. <laughs> And we don't have any new properties, we're just maintaining, we're just... Man and we're so happy here thinking of Krishna. That is not devotion. No, Prabhupada wants results. And he pushed, Prabhupada pushed devotees to get results. And that was why after Prabhupada left, the devotees who r r came after Prabhupada, they pushed. <laughs> Right, that, that Prabhupada said, this is the, like the, like a train, you know. The engine starts and it pulls one carriage. And the one carriage gets connected to another carriage. And in this way, the, all, the big line of carriages are all being pulled. And so the initial Acharya, the founder, Srila Prabhupada, started this Krishna consciousness movement. And he gave the initial push to get things going. And so long as you keep it going, it's not so difficult. But if you stop, then it becomes difficult to start again. That's a danger. We have to watch out for that. If we st once the train stops, then it has to start again. It takes so much energy to get started again. So, but if you keep it going, uh, just like Indian railways, right? The train comes late. But they have a saying in the Indian railways, keep the wheels rolling. <laughs> Even they don't go very fast, you keep the wheels going. <laughs> because if they stop, then... Psh, it's a big effort to get it going again. The arrow has to go forward. If the arrow is not going forward, we'll go down. Mm -hmm. Krishna consciousness is like that. We have to be going forward. We have to be advancing, going, play, increasing, doing more, expanding. If we're not, if we're just maintaining, you just go down. You can't just maintain. So this is why Prabhupada was pushing. Keep the wheels rolling. Keep going. Always trying to expand, trying to do more for the service of Krishna. So devotional service is not idle. Some people, they they, th they think, oh, I will become a devotee, I'll have a nice place to eat and sleep. And they become a devotee and we say, okay, here's a book bag. Go out and distribute books. And they say, oh, no, no, I just want to eat and sleep. Then you came to the wrong place, right? <laughs> go, go to the forest. 
You just want to eat and sleep. Go and live in the forest. But the Krishna consciousness movement, I was saying this morning, Prabhupada's temple is a base for the army to go out and fight Maya. Not a place for just eating and sleeping. Hmm. People sometimes people come to Krishna consciousness. If they if they don't have the desire to do service, then they will be they won't find any pleasure in the Krishna consciousness movement. If they just want to be here and you know, like like they have these other temples there. You know, they have one person there do the puja, ring the bell, and, and he said, during the day he'll just sit and read a book, you know. But they don't do any, pre they don't have any preaching program. They're not going out. They're not meeting the public. They're not going forward. They're just sitting and waiting. But we go out to bring the people, to find them, to bring them to Krishna. And Prabhupada taught that devotees of Krishna are everywhere. They're just waiting for us to come there and find them. And we have to get them and engage them in Krishna's service. So, devotional service means activity keeping ourselves active. 24 hours, right? Mahatmanas to Mamparta, Devi, or, or Satatam Kirtayanto Mam, Yatanta. The Mahatmas, they're always doing something. They're always chanting the glories of Krishna. They're endeavoring with determination. They're bowing before the Lord. They're always engaged in devotional service. That is devotee. That is Mahatma. They keep themselves active in the service of Krishna. And if we're not serving Krishna, if we become idle, then the Maya comes. Like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was concerned about his Godiamat, that the devotees were only thinking, I will have this room, I will be comfortable here, this will be a good room for me. They were not thinking about going out and preaching. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati would come to their temple and he would see how much money they had. And he would spend it all. He would put on a, a pandal or an exhibition of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And the devotees would say, Oh, Guru Maharaj, you're spending all the money. And he would say, Yes. Now you have to go out and preach. So you just have, if we have money, we think, oh, it's okay, we have money, you know, we don't need to worry. We have our prasadam, we don't need to go out. But when there's a need, then you... <laughs> so he would do like that. He liked to come and spend the money. Then the devotees have to go out and work and make more money <laughs> for Krishna. So activities, all for Krishna's pleasure. So, uh, Sri Prahlad Maharaj recommends Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu Right. The nine processes of devotional service are as follows. First one, Hearing the name and glories of the Personality of Godhead. Two, chanting the glories. Three, remembering the Lord. Four, serving the Lord's feet. Five, worshipping the Deity. Six, offering obeisances unto the Lord. Seven, acting as the Lord's servant. Eight, making friends with the Lord. Nine, <coughs> sur surrendering oneself fully to the Lord. Now sometimes it's said, <coughs> uh, 
at prices 8 and 9, they're very advanced. In order to practice those last two, you have to be in Raga Bhakti. You have to be on the level of spontaneous devotion in order to become the friend of Krishna and to surrender everything. They are very advanced levels of bhakti. Right? To, to become Krishna's friend. That's very special. You have to be able to, to speak to Krishna. Some devotees were able to do that. They said, you know, in Tirupati, do you go to Tirupati? You've been all there? You know Hati Ram Swami's ashram there? Hati Ram Swami ashram? You know that? No? You don't know? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So Hati Ram Swami, he was uh, a great saint. He used to play chess with Lord Balaji. <laughs> Lord Balaji used to come and they would play chess together. He was such a great devotee that, of course, they didn't know, people didn't know, and he didn't tell anybody, but the Lord was coming and he was playing chess with them. And uh, one day the Lord somehow left his ornament, his jewel necklace, he left it in the room where he'd been playing chess with Hati Ram Swami. And when they, they were looking for the necklace and they found it in his room, they thought he had stolen it from the Lord. And so there, and he was telling him, no, no, he was telling the Lord comes here, he plays chess, we play chess together. You know, we're, they're like friends, you know. So they had, he had that rasa. Of course they didn't believe him and they, they had, he had to prove it to them and what, what happened, they put some sugar cane or something and in the night, the elephant came and ate all the sugar cane or something. And somehow, there's some pastime anyway it takes place that he proved to the people that the Lord actually come, came there and played chess with them. And so even today, they make the Mongol arti sweet for the Lord. Their ashram have that service for Lord Balaji. They cook the milk sweet which is offered at Mongol arti every day. Anyway, he was a friend, just like Arjuna was a friend with Krishna. So this Hati Ram Swami, he was a friend with Lord, Tirup Lord Balaji. But that's very rare, very uncommon to be Krishna's friend. Uh, and surrender everything. That is also very, very difficult to give up everything, like Bali Maharaj gave up everything. And he had a lot. He was the king of heaven and everything taken from him and then sent down to Sutala Loka in one of the subterranean heavenly planets. So that's, these are very difficult kinds of bhakti to do. And it's also said if you do proper chanting of the holy name, in the chanting of the holy name, all the nine kinds of devotional service can be there. Within chanting of the holy name. That it's all included. All these different angas. We are trying to chant. At least chanting, we want to hear and chant and remember. When the chanting is done properly, hearing, chanting, remembering. And if it's done really on the highest level, then all the nine kinds of devotional service are included within that chanting of the holy name. So chanting of the holy name is the most important of all of our activities. So Prabhupada explains, Shravanam, or hearing, is the first step in acquiring transcendental knowledge. One should not give oral reception to unauthorized persons, 
but should approach the proper person as recommended in Bhagavad Gita 434. Translation, just try to learn the truth by yeah, inquire from him submissively. The self-realized soul Okay, so this, this is the process of approaching the spiritual teacher. Tadvidi pranipatena. Pranipatena, fall down without reservation. One should fall down, one should submit oneself fully. And Prabhupada in the purport to this verse, he talks about you, you cannot uh, approach the spiritual master in a challenging way. You have to approach submissively. So we should submit ourselves. Prani patena, fall down. And then pari prashnena means to put questions, all round questions. You don't ask him what's the lucky number for the lottery. <laughs> and you don't ask him, you know, <laughs> these kind, you don't ask these kind of questions. But we want to ask about the science of Krishna consciousness. It should be in relation to Krishna. So pari prashnena and sevaya, render serve. So that's for the disciple. And then the spiritual, the one who's giving knowledge, he's also described. Jnaninas tadvanarshana. Mm. Right? That, that. He knows the truth. He's seen the truth and he can explain it also. Sometimes you get the guru, you'll say, well, I know the truth, I know everything. I just can't put it into words. So you can't put it into words, you're not going to be able to teach anything. Eh? You don't know anything, you can't explain anything. They say, I, I know everything, I just can't put it into words. <laughs> so what's the good? Well, they have to know, they have to have seen the truth. Not only have they seen the truth, but they can reveal it to others also. So that is the qualification of the Tattvadashi, one who knows the truth. That he's seen the truth and he can show us also the truth. So both the disciple and the spiritual teacher their qualities are described in that verse. It is further recommended in the Mandaka Upanishad. Tadvigyanartam sagurum eva begachit. To understand that transcendental science, one must approach a bona fide spiritual master. Thus the method of submissively receiving transcendental confidential knowledge is not is not merely based on mental speculation in this regard Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami Brahmanda Brahmite in the course of traveling the universal creation of Brahma Some fortunate soul may receive the seed of Bhakti Lata, the creeper of devotional service. This is all by the grace of Guru and Krishna. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela 19, 151. This, the material world is a place of confinement for the living entities who are by nature anandamaya, pleasure-seeking. They actually want to be free from the confinement of the world of conditioned happiness. But not knowing the process of liberation, they are bound to transmigrate from one species of life to another and from one planet to another. 
In this way, the living entities are wandering throughout the material universe. When by good fortune one comes in contact with a pure devotee and hears from him patiently, one begins to follow the path of devotional service. Such an opportunity is offered to a person who is sincere. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is giving such a chance to it's such a chance to f humanity at large if by fortune if by fortune one takes advantage of this opportunity to engage in devotional service the path of liberation immediately opens so Prabhupada said People have to be sincere. They have to take advantage of this opportunity. If they take advantage of the opportunity, if they are sincere, then the path of devotional service opens. So this is the gift of the Krishna consciousness movement. It's an opportunity for everyone. They want to get out of the material world. We are confined in this world, right? Prabhupada explains very clearly here, we are in this universe, we are confined into this universe. Just like in the jail, people are confined in the prison house. So this world is also the prison house. We are also in the prison house. And our body is the prison uniform that material body and we have to, we want to get free we want to get out of this prison house how to get out so we need help we are we are prisoners we are chained the shackles of the modes of nature they are the chains on the conditioned souls and to get free somebody who is free has to help us. We have to get help from pers a person who's already out of the prison house. And that is the spiritual teachers who come, who give us the knowledge, they give us the instruction, and they tell us how to get free from this material existence. And we, ha we have to understand we have been here in this world a long time. We are called Nityabada, eternally conditioned souls. Nitya, not in the sense that we are eternally conditioned souls, but in the sense that we've been here a very long time. It's been a very long time that we came into this world. But we can get out. The Nitya Bada can become Nitya Mukta by the mercy of the spiritual teachers. Because the spiritual teacher gives the seed. They sow the Bhakti Lata Beach. So we have to put that seed, take that seed and nourish it carefully. One should accept this opportunity to return home back to Godhead very enthusiastically. Without enthusiasm, one cannot be successful. Even in the material world, one has to be very enthusiastic in his particular field of activity in order to become successful. A student businessman, artist, or anyone else who wants success in his line must be enthusiastic. Similarly, one has to be very enthusiastic in devotional service. Enthusiasm means action. But action for whom? The action, the answer is that one should always act for Krishna. Krishnarta, uh, what is it? Krishnarta Akila Cheta. 
bhakti rasamrita sin. All right, so Prabhupada is talking about enthusiasm. There's a nice example about enthusiasm. Prabhupada was watching some, he saw some cartoon, Charlie Chaplin. And Prabhupada saw in the, in the film, he was telling Charlie Chaplin the, how, what happened. Charlie Chaplin, so he was wearing this jacket which had a, a tail on the back. And somehow he ripped the, the, the jacket and made a big split in the tails in the back. But he didn't worry about it. He went back into the dancing hall and he danced very enthusiastically. And everybody was looking at and they were watching, oh, look at him, you know, and they saw him dancing so enthusiastically. And they saw him dancing like that. And so they all went and ripped their jackets and they all came back and they danced enthusiastically. <laughs> they, all felt, they all copied him. And Prabhupada told the devotees, when the first devotees, uh, the three householder couples, you know, Shamsundar and Guru Das and Makunda with their wives, they were coming to the, to the UK to bring Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada told them, that story, and he told them, say, when you go to England, you should be enthusiastic. Because they were going to England with a shaved head. And, you know, in the, in the 1960s, everybody had long hair. And they're going with no hair, with a shaved head. So Prabhupada told them, he said, just be enthusiastic and everybody will follow you. And so it happened, you know, that that musician, the Englishman, that George Harrison, he was very, very famous. He was a very famous. The Beatles were very, very famous. You know, the whole world knew about them. So, Sham Sundar, sometimes he said he would walk in the street with George Harrison. They'd be walking together. And George Harrison would say to him, he said, he said, you're the only person who I walk with. He said, more people look at you than look at me. <laughs> you know, he's very, very famous. Usually, you're ever, he's always where people, oh, everybody noticing me, people look at George Harrison, George Harrison, you know, very famous, big name. But when he would be with the Shamsundar, more people would look at Shamsundar than look at George Harrison. <laughs> so he was surprised like that. So the, they took advantage of that. The, because they were different from everybody else, they were, but they were more enthusiastic. And that enthusiasm, that is a very contagious thing. It's very important. When we distribute books, to be enthusiastic is very important. To give the book to people, you know, you want people to get the book. If you're, enthusi if you're enthusiastic about it, people want to know, what is this book? Yeah. This man is so enthusiastic about it, you know? The people are surprised. So, how to be enthusiastic? By being enthusiastic. You just have to be enthusiastic. Associate with people who are enthusiastic. If they are enthusiastic, you also become enthusiastic. But it's very important. That is the first item, the first thing which is, can help us to be successful in devotional service. We have that utsahan. Now Prabhupada saw devotees coming to him in the beginning of our movement they were not very expert. They were not very learned. They were not very well educated or cultured or anything. But they had one quality, enthusiasm. Whatever Prabhupada would ask them to do, they'd be very enthusiastic to do it. So that, that, that's a very important quality. Sometimes people, they're, you know, they're, 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 oh, 
you know, I no, I can't do it just now. Wait, I'll do it in the future. You know, put off. They, they try to delay everything, postpone everything. No, give me more time. I need to think about it. That kind of mood. To be, <coughs> to always be hesitating and reluctant. But devotee, enthusiastic, whatever Prabhupada wants, yes, let's do it, let's go, do it. And you could see what, what, what they did, you know, how Prabhupada sent people around the world. You go there, you go, you go, the Upendra went to Australia, no books, nothing. You know, nowadays, you know, if you want to open a temple, you want to go somewhere to preach, you have facilities. But Prabhupada was sending people no books, no instruments hardly, hardly knew anything, but sending them to the other side of the world to open a temple. And they, could, they did it. They got people to join them. It's amazing how much success they got. Why did they get that success? Simply because of their enthusiasm and their faith in Guru and Krishna. Because they had so much faith in Guru and Krishna and their enthusiasm to go. Now people are, some people are just amazed, you know, that, wow, you know. You go all the way there, you didn't have any money, you didn't have any, anything, and you're going to open a temple? It's unbelievable. Now Prabhupada, he's coming from India. You know, he's a senior man. Of course, he had a lot of knowledge, he's well prepared. But these, you've got these young devotees, they've been devotees two years. <laughs> you know, in two years, what do you know? The, it was just the beginning of our movement. They didn't know very much. But somehow they had that faith, they had that enthusiasm. So that's very, very important. You have to have that, that kind of confidence, that enthusiasm to go there and do... Mm. Okay. Uh, in all phases of life, one has to perform devotional activities under the direction of the spiritual master in order to attain perfection in bhakti yoga. It is not that one has to confine on or narrow one's activities. Krishna is all-pervading. Therefore, nothing is independent of Krishna, as Krishna himself states in Bhagavad Gita. Ma Maya, yeah, go ahead. By me, in my unmanifested form, Unmanifested form, the avyakta murtina, right? Mayata tamidam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina. So Krishna is saying, by me in my unman unmanifested form, in my avyakta murtina, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, one has to make everything favorable for Krishna's service. For example, at present we are using a dictaphone. The materialist who invented this mundane machine intended it for businessmen or writers of mundane subject matters. He certainly never thought of using the dictaphone in God's service. But we are using the dictaphone to write Krishna-conscious literature. 
Of course, the manufacturer of the dictaphone is wholly within the energy of Krishna. All the purity of the all all the all the part parts of the instrument, including the electronic functions are made from different combinations and interactions of the five basic types of material element, namely Bhumi, Jata, Agni, uh, Vayu and Akash. The inventor used the brain to make this complicated machine and his brain as well as the ingredients were supplied by Krishna. According to the statement of Krishna, Matstani Sarva Bhutani, everything is depending on my energy. Thus the devotee can understand that since nothing is independent of Krishna's energy, everything should be dovetailed in his service. So, Prabhupada is explaining this philosophical, philosophical point that everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is his energy. And because it's his energy, it's all meant to be used in his service. Of course, that same point comes up again in the fifth chapter in the peace formula. Peace formula. Right. You want to be peaceful, you have to know three things. We have to remember, Krishna is the supreme proprietor. He is Maheshwar. And he is the supreme enjoyer. But he is also our best friend. And if we can remember that, then we can be peaceful. We have to recognize Krishna as the proprietor. And we should be we should consider ourselves very fortunate to have such a friend as Krishna. And the word used for friend is very special. It's a very special kind of friend. In the material world, we have many friends who come and go. When we were children, you had friends. And then we grow up, you go to school, you have friends. They go to college, you have different friends. And then you get a job, you have different friends. And then you get married, you have different friends. But there's one friend who's always with us all the time. And that is Krishna. Suridam Sarva Bhutanam. The best friend of all living. The problem is we have forgotten him. We're not taking care of him. It's like that story about that man who had four wives. Right? Do you know that story about the man with the four wives? The first wife, you know, the, he liked her very much. He spent all his time and all his money on the first wife. She was the young wife, you know? So he spent a lot of time, a lot of money on her. And then the second wife, she was also good. And she would help in the business and he liked her some, you know, she was useful. And then the third wife, she was okay, you know, she always helped around the house and she was good with the family and so on, take care of their family affairs and the home and everything. But the fourth wife, he didn't care about her, you know. Like the oldest wife, you know, too old, you know, old. They, they like men like the young woman, you know, like Dasarath, he liked Kaikeya, you know. Kaikeya Kai Kai is a young wife. Goshalya, she's the older wife. Yeah. <laughs> so like that, this was the, 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 the scene in Ayodhya. So this man had four wives. But then he found out he's got a disease, going to die very soon. So he comes to the first, the first wife, the young wife, who he spent all his time and money on. And he tells, her, he tells her, I'm going to die. I have to die. Will you come with me when I die? And she said, 
You're going to die. I'm not going to go with you. No way. And so then he asked the second wife, you know, I'm going to die. Will, will you come with me? And she said, well, uh, if you're going to die, maybe I have to get married again. <laughs> So then the third wife, he asked her, I'm going to die, will you come with me? She said, well, I'll come with you to the crematorium. I'll come with you to the burning ghats, right? I'll come that far. That's as far as... But the fourth wife, she said, I will go with you. The one who he never cared about, never... She said, I will go with you. So these four wives, they represent also our situation our situation here in this material world. The first wife who we spend all our time and all our money on, who is that? The body, right? The body, our material body. We spend all our time and money taking care of the body. You look at the shops, they're all for the skin and for the hair. <laughs> yeah. Most of the shops, it's all decorating the skin and the hair. Sometimes putting tattoos on the skin and painting the face, makeup and everything. You know what, the money people spend on the body is just unbelievable. To try to take care, to make this body look nice. So the skin and the hair. But at the time of death, will that body go with us? Mm, no, we have to leave that body behind. And then the second wife who said, Well, if you're going to die, I'm going to get married again. That is the property, right? All our money, all of our things which we possess. As soon as we go, well, I could take that. I could have his car. I could take you know, <laughs> I can take his, you know, when they'll fight, all the relatives will fight, who gets the money, who gets what? They'll all argue, oh, he told me I should get this. There, there were some daughters, one man died, he had some daughters, so the daughters were all fighting. Fa Daddy said I was to get, father said I was to get the money. No, I said I was to get. They're all arguing with each other, you know, fight with each other. I'm supposed to get his money, I'm supposed to get the house, I'm supposed to get his car. That is the material world. Even for a small amount of money, they'll fight with each other, kill each other. And then the third wife, who said, I'll go with you to crematorium. So that is relatives, the family members, relatives. They can go with us to the crematorium. After that, they won't go any further. The relationship is over, finished, right? But the fourth wife who said, I will go with you, that is the paramatma, the super soul. The super soul accompanies us. But we're not taking care of the super soul. If you read the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read about the Brahman from Avanti Desh. The Brahman from Avanti Desh, he was a rich man at one point, but then he lost all of his money. When he was a rich man, he was very mean and miserly. Hardly he would give any money to his children or his wife or his servants. Everybody hated him. <laughs> he was a rich man, but he was miser. So then, he lost all of his money. And when he lost all of his money, then everybody rejected him. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. So he was completely rejected. So he decided he would take sannyas. <laughs> takes it because he was a brahmana. So he could go and take sannyas. He became a sannyasi. And he would go to people and they would spit on him. They would do all terrible things to him. They, he'd bring his bowl to beg. They would pass urine in his begging bowl. They would spit in his begging bowl. They would pass air in his face. <laughs> they did all her. But how did he take it all? 
he took he took it all that the arrangement of Krishna. He he fixed himself on the super soul, and he accepted all of the difficulties to be the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. And he just remained fixed in meditation on the super soul. Paramatmanishta. Right? There's this is a, there's a prayer there, the, the, how the, the Brahmana from Avantidesh prays that I will cross over this ocean of material existence by being firmly fixed in the super soul. This process is approved by all acharyas. And so sannyasis, they chant this prayer regularly. This is the Avantidesh Brahmana. Teaching us meditation, concentration on the super soul. And in this way you overcome all the obstacles in life. You just accept whatever happens. And so we want to develop that kind of confidence, that kind of faith in the supreme, in the super soul. Okay, where are we? Uh, we were talking about the... Oh, yeah. Did we read that, Endeavor? Okay, we have to read that. Thank you, yes. This is an important point. Endeavor executed with intelligence in Krishna consciousness is called Utsahan or enthusiasm. Sometimes you know, sometimes people are not very intelligent. They are very enthusiastic. <laughs> and they do crazy things. They, they do stupid things. They get a movement in trouble. We get a bad name. They do very bad things. So Prabhupada here defines what is enthusiasm. Endeavoring with intelligence in Krishna consciousness. That is enthusiasm. So we have to be intelligent, we have to be cautious how we act, what we do. It's not just, oh be enthusiastic, come on Prabhu! <laughs> it's not just mad enthusiasm, but endeavoring with intelligence in Krishna consciousness. So we have to use intelligence. Prabhupada was sometimes frustrated, disappointed with some of the devotees, you know, not very intelligent. We do things all wrong. So, he's pointing out here, what is real enthusiasm? The devotees, <coughs> the devotees find the the devotees find the correct means by which everything can be utilized in the service of the Lord. Nirbanda, Krishna Sambande. They, the, ex the execution of devotional service is not a matter of idle meditation, but practical action in the foreground of spiritual life. Three activities must be executed, or these activities must be executed with patience. One should not be impatient in Krishna consciousness. Indeed, the Krishna consciousness movement was started single-handedly, and in the beginning there was no response. But because we continued to execute our devotional activities with patience, People gradually began to understand the importance of this movement and now they are eagerly participating. One should not be impatient in discharging devotional service but should take instruction from the spiritual master and execute them with patience 
depending on the mercy of Guru and Krishna. The successful execution of Krishna conscious activities requires both patience and confidence. A newly married girl naturally expects offspring from her husband, but she cannot expect to have them immediately after marriage. Of course, as soon as she is married, she can attempt to get a child, but she must surrender to her husband, confident that her child will develop and be born in due time. Similarly, in devotional service, surrender means that one has to become confident. The devotee thinks, Avashashya, uh, Krishna will surely protect me and give me help from the successful execution of devotional service. This is called confidence. So sometimes people are too patient. You can be too patient. You know, some people are too enthusiastic, some people are too patient. You can't be too patient. And just like people say, oh, let's, let's go out and preach, so let's have a pro... Oh, just be patient, oh, in the future we'll do it, give time, be patient. You cannot just simply be patient all the time. Some patience is required, but not too much. Try to be too patient, that is also not good. So everything has to be balanced. So patience, endeavoring, at the same time depending on Krishna. That Krishna will give me protection. We want to be enthusiastic, at the same time we have to be patient. So you can see the contrast. Enthusiasm, you want to go out and change the world. And patience, you just want to wait and say, uh, it will happen, let Krishna do it, Krishna will tell us the time. You know? <laughs> Sometimes we want to put off doing what should be done. So being patient, sometimes devotees say, I want to go the fastest, I want the best, the fastest way to become Krishna conscious. I want to go on the fast track. But Prabhupada said, patient, be patient. People are at new devotees and they're asking, can I do Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti? <laughs> You know, they're just, they're just new devotees, they've been in the movement a few months and they want to go to Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti. Is it possible? It's unlikely, right? It's not recommended. They have to practice sadhana bhakti first. Then gradually they can try to come to the higher level of bhakti. You cannot just simply jump to the top, to the topmost level. And we see also people, they want to go immediately to the tenth canto, and they want to study Rasa Lila, and they want to hear all about Krishna and the gopis. They have not heard about how Krishna creates. They have not heard about Krishna's avatars and Krishna's expansion. They just want to hear about Gopi Bhav. So, we have to be patient. We have to gradually proceed, step by step. Not that we jump to the topmost level immediately. So, enthusiasm is good. 
Enthusiasm means endeavoring. What? And what's the definition of enthusiasm? In Christ, endeavoring with intelligence in Krishna consciousness. That is real intelligence. All right, and then. <clears throat> As already explained, one should not, one should not be idle, but should be very enthusiastic about executing the regulative principles. Tat tat karma pravartanat, neglect of the regulative principles will, will destroy devotional service. In the Krishna Consciousness Movement, there are four basic regulative principles. Forbidding illicit sex, meat-eating, gambling and intoxication. A devotee must be very enthusiastic about following these principles. If he becomes slack in following any of them, his progress will certainly be they be checked. Srila Rupa Goswami therefore recommends tat tat karma pravartanat. One must strictly follow the regulative principles of Vaidhi Bhakti. In addition to these four prohibitions, yama, there are positive regulative principles, niyama, such as the daily chanting of 16 rounds of japa mala beads. These regulative activities must be faithfully performed with enthusiasm. This is called tat tat karma pravartanat or varied engagement in devotional service. So sometimes people say, why four principles? Oh, it's so difficult four principles, we should just have three principles. If there were only three principles, then we can have many devotees. Right? People say like that. They say, why four principles? We should just have three principles. Make it three. It will be easier to make devotees. We'll have many, many devotees. So what's the problem? Why don't we just have three? Why four principles? Yeah, what's the reason? Why we have to have four principles? Why not just three? Because that makes us human. Huh? That distinguishes us from animals to humans. Hmm. Well. We should stop doing sin sinful activities. We should stop. We should stop doing sinful activities. Uh, yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Srimad Bhagavatam describes that the bull stands on four legs. Satyam Sochas, Satyam Sochyam Dayatapa. The four pillars of religion. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. So if, if we have only three, then it means people are still engaging in sinful activities. And it means there's no pure devotees. We'll never have any pure devotees. Because if there's only three principles, everyone will follow three principles. Nobody will follow four principles. And we won't have any pure devotees. And it won't be a movement of pure devotees anymore. So our movement will be finished. That's the problem. So people sometimes, they, may, they want these compromises. They want to compromise things. But they don't understand we want to keep the purity. Prabhupada said, don't change anything. Don't compromise. The, one time there were, these, there were these young men in Hawaii. And they were 
professional tennis coaches. They had tennis school teaching tennis and and they were devotees, they were chanting, they were coming to the temple. So they asked Prabhupada about initiation. But they told Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, they said, we can only chant 12 rounds. We cannot chant 16 rounds. Because we're so busy teaching tennis, and we have to do a lot of running, and we have to do a lot of exercises to keep fit and so on. We don't get enough time to chant 16 rounds, but we can chant 12 rounds. So can we get initiation? And Prabhupada said, no. <laughs> he said, no. First you chant 16 rounds, then you get initiation. Prabhupada wouldn't compromise. And you get people like that. They want, sometimes people say, why 16 rounds? We should just chant four rounds. If it's just four rounds, I could chant good rounds. Sixteen rounds is too many. And so they'll change it. After they chant four rounds, they'll say, why four rounds? One round is enough. <laughs> uh, just like Sri Vaishnavas, they chant one round. They're chanting one round. Uh, and after a time, why chant one round? Just chant one beat. Everything will be minimized, everything will be reduced. Now people always try to compromise everything. But we cannot do that. We cannot change anything, just to suit. We're not interested how many people we have. We want quality. There should be quality devotees. Not, quantity is not important. Quality or quantity? Prabhupada said, okay, quality is all right, we don't mind, but they must, they must be strict. The, the quantity is not so important as the quality. One moon in the sky can light the whole sky, but millions of stars, they won't light the sky at night. You can have many stars in the sky. They're not going to light up the sky, but one moon will light the whole sky. So one pure devotee, he can change the whole planet. But if you have a lot of people who are not, who are not following, who don't chant much rounds, and they don't follow four principles, you won't get anything, no result. Just people will have a a bad impression about Krishna consciousness. So we, we, we are quite strict about these things. Tat tat karma pravartanat. Following the regulative principles like hearing and chanting. Very important. If people don't come regularly to the temple, we don't know what they're doing. Are they hearing? Are they chanting? In Prabhupada's time, everybody lived in the temple. Everyone was in the temple. It was much easier to see who's, who's ready for initiation. Now, it's much more congregation. People are all living outside the temple. You don't know who's chanting. You don't know what time they get up in the morning. You don't know if they offer their food because they're congregation. So it, it's risky. It's more, it's more, you don't know who's, an, who's actually genuine. They may be, just like Prabhupada said, he never lived in the temple. Prabhupada was also congregation. He lived outside the temple, but he was very strict. So some people may be very strict, more strict than the people in the temple. We don't know. But Rupa Goswami is telling us what's the standard. You have to, you have to be regularly hearing and chanting. Uh.
Furthermore, in order to be successful in devotional service, one must give up the association of undesirable people. This includes karmis, jnanis, yogis, and other non-devotees. Once Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked by one of his uh, householder devotees about the general principles of Vaishnavism as well as the general routine activities of the Vaishnavas. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately replied, Asat Sangha Tyag, E Vaishnav Achar. Right? The characteristic, characteristically, a Vaishnava is one who gives up the association of worldly people or non-devotees. So that's a nice pastime. Recently we went to that place, Kulinagram. In Kulinagram there was this Rama, Ramachandra Khan, Ramachandra Khan, or Satya Raj Khan. Anyway, he was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He came from Kulinagram. And they would go to Rathiatra every year. They would walk. You know, people would all come from the different villages. Shantipur and Sri Racha and all the different places. They would all come and they would all go to Mayapur, uh, to Jagannath Puri for the Rathiatra. So Lord Chaitanya would meet with the people from the different villages. And he met with these people from Kulinagram. And the one devotee, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, I am in householder life. I am very fallen. How can I make advancement? And Lord Chaitanya told him, you have to constantly chant, chant the holy name and you have to serve the Vaishnavas, serve the devotees. These two things. So then the devotee said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, how to recognize a devotee? How do I know who is a Vaishnava? So Lord Chaitanya, he didn't say that, oh, you have tilak on, you have big neck beads on, you have a shaved head. No. But Lord Chaitanya said, how will he recognize a Vaishnava? Huh? What did you say? Asat Sangha Tyag. He gives up the associate. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's one qualification of a devotee. That, that's right. He chants the Hare Krishna mantra. Lord Ch Each year the, the devotee came there to Lord Chaitanya and he was asking him how to recognize a Vaishnava. The first time Lord Chaitanya said, Anybody who chants the holy name one time, he's considered a devotee. And then the next year, he came again. And he asked the same question to Lord Chaitanya. How to recognize a Vaishnava? And Lord Chaitanya said, if someone regularly chants the holy name, he's a Vaishnava. And then again, the year later, it came back, and again, the same question. How can I recognize who is a Vaishnava, who is a devotee? Lord Chaitanya said, that person, simply by seeing him, makes other people chant the holy name. He is a Vaishnava. Hmm? So understand different levels of devotees. There's a, like... Kanista Madhyam Uttama. So somebody has just began to chant the holy name. He's chanted the holy name one time. He's just starting to chant the holy name. He's a devotee, but he's on the lower level. And somebody else is chanting regularly. He's more like the Madhyama devotee. He's chanting regularly. Every day he's chanting his rounds. He does his chanting. Madhyama Adik, and somebody else is Uttama. Simply you see him and he make, makes everybody chant the holy name. 
So these are different levels of devotees. In this way, Lord Chaitanya explained how to recognize a devotee. But Prabhupada is quoting the, this particular point, which was also made by Lord Chaitanya. Asat Sangatyag Evaishnava. Evaishnavacha. Stri Sangha Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ara. Lord Chaitanya said like that, that the qualification of a devotee is he will give up the association of the asat. We do satsang, we have satsanga, association with the eternal. But we have to give up the asat sangha. Give up the asat, asat sangha tiag. Give up the asat sangha means association with the material. No more Bollywood movies. No bar. No club. <laughs> None of these nonsense things, right? We give up the asat. That is the qualification, the characteristic of a devotee. And Sri Sangha, Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ara. That he, he doesn't associate with the opposite sex and he doesn't associate with people who are fond of indulging in association with the opposite sex either womanizers he doesn't associate with women and he doesn't associate with people who are womanizers we avoid that kind of person so this is a characteristic of the devotee Srila Naratam Das Thakur has therefore recommended Tandara Charana Seva Bhakta Sanivas. One, one, one has to live in the company of pure devotees and execute the regulative principles laid down by the previous Acharyas, the six Goswamis. Namely, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami and Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. If one lives in the association of devotees, there is little chance of associating with non-devotees. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is opening many centers, just like in Atarpur, to invite people <laughs> <laughs> to invite people to live in the company of devotees and practice the regulated principles of spiritual life. Association, again. So, avoid the association of the Janasanga, the materialistic people. Generally, you know, like uh, people see you're a devotee and they, they don't want to associate with you anymore. <laughs> Your old friends, the people who were with you maybe before you became a devotee, that when they see you become a devotee, they think, oh, <laughs> they, they, they don't bother. Even the family, sometimes the family, they don't want to be bothered, you know, you become a devotee. Sometimes people will t they will they will tell their mother and father you want to because sometimes mother and father will say come see me come home come and see the family so what you can do is say you come and see me <laughs> come to the temple come and see me at the temple you know that's better if they come to the temple because then they can see the temple, they can see the deities, they can have prasadam. But if you go home, uh, then it, <laughs> you, know, you have to be in that atmosphere again, material life, the family, the, all the mundane relations. And sometimes people also, they'll tell, when you come home, you know, in, in the West, we would often go for Sankirtan, and we would wear wigs. We, we, we would have a wig. 
we put a wig on because if you have a shaved head, you know, people think weird, you know? Young people with shaved head. So we'd put a wig on and karmi clothes and we'd go and, and like, so that the, the, the family will say, when you come home, wear your wig. <laughs> Because they don't like to see you with a shaved head. <laughs> they don't like. Uh, the mother's thinking, oh, my son used to have such nice hair. <laughs> so, this is it. the family life, you see. It's very mundane. It's on that level, you know. They say, come home. Don't come as a devotee, you know. <laughs> Wear your wig. Wear put normal clothes on. <laughs> like that. So that's Jana Sangha. That's association with people who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. So we, we have to be aware. Give up that kind of association. And associate, take advantage, associate with the devotee. Devotional service means transcendental activities. On the transcendental platform, there is no contamination by the three modes of material nature. This is called Vishuddha Sattva, the platform of pure goodness, or goodness free from contamination by the qualities of passion and ignorance. In this Krishna consciousness movement, we require everyone to rise early in the morning by 4 a.m. and attend Mongol Arti or morning worship. Then read Srimad Bhagavatam, perform Kirtan and so forth. Thus we hold continuous activities in devotional service 24 hours daily. This is called Sato Vritti or following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas who expertly filled every moment of time with Krishna conscious activities. Prabhupada is talking how everybody has to get up by four o'clock in the morning. Waking up early, Prabhupada would often write letters to the devotees. You know, devotees may be somewhere opening a center somewhere and they would write to Prabhupada and Prabhupada would say, I hope you're getting up early and keeping the, the regular program. Even if you're not staying in the temple, still you would want to wake up four o'clock in the morning, just like devotees when you go traveling, right? When you go in your vehicles, you're traveling, book distribute, you want to get up early in the morning. Must be up before four o'clock in the morning. That's important. We don't sleep late. Materialistic people, they sleep late. But devotees, we wake up early, early to bed, early to rise. Makes a man and Prabhupada said, it is a fact. It is a fact. If you follow that program, that you'll be healthy, you'll be wealthy, you'll be wise. It's a good program to practice that like that. So, some devotees even wake up very early. I heard in Pune, sometimes you go to Pune temple and they're already up and chanted the rounds before Mongol Arti, and they even have a class before Mongol Arti. <laughs> have one class before Mongol Arti. I don't know. I, I've never been, I haven't been there for a long time to Pune. I haven't seen the new temple, but I heard like that. They have that, they have that eagerness, you know, they're so eager. They want to wake up and start, do their chanting and then hearing and studying scriptures. So, that kind of enthusiasm, very helpful for spiritual advancement. So eager to hear, right? The sages at Naimisharanya, Sonika Rishi was de is describing, we're eager to hear. They're very eager. 
So that eagerness to hear, that is very important. So waking up early in the morning. If we get up early and go to Mongol Arti, our day is auspicious. If you don't go to Mongol Arti, the day is inauspicious. And Prabhupada spoke about that J.K. Singhania in Kanpur. If you don't come to Mongol Arti, they, well, I don't know about Mongol Arti, but the Singhania family, they have a deity in their home, and the joint family all living together. So everyone in the family have to go and see the deity every day. And if they don't go to see the deity, they get fined. And the pujari will say, oh, you did not come yesterday, you have to pay the fine. And they'll say, oh, yes, all right, here, take the money, they'll give the money. So Prabhupada, the same way, he said the same way in our Krishna consciousness movement, he was in Los Angeles at the time, he said, everyone who doesn't come to Mongol Arti, there is a fine. And the fine is, you have to distribute one Krishna book. <laughs> Krishna book, that was uh, the popular book to distribute. So he said, that's a fine. You go and distribute one Krishna book. So like that, keep yourself Krishna conscious. So following the regulative principle, wake up early. Some people wake up early and then go to sleep quick again. They get up and then go back to sleep. And so we have to want to stay awake. Some people, now they have online everything. They watch the Mongol Arti online. They lay in their bed and watch Mongol Arti. <laughs> they didn't even get up. They didn't take bath or anything. <laughs> Watching everything online. So ideally we should wake up and take bath, and get refreshed. Okay, any questions? Any difficulty to follow these principles? Yes, Prudhu? In the beginning you mentioned that sometimes we make devotees and devotees go to another temple, then we really feel sad. But our, like, but our purpose would be like to make devotees. So if, some, if we make devotees and if we even to another temple, then we should, um, ideally we shouldn't feel sad that because anybody is practicing this consciousness. So it, well, if they go outside of Krishna consciousness movement, not they go another temple, but they go to another movement outside of ISKCON. They go away from Prabhupada's shelter. They go into another society, another institution. Then we feel sad. We don't mind thought if they go another temple, that's okay. But going away from Krishna consciousness movement to some other movement, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes? Question? Yes? <laughs> well, it could be different for different people. You know, some people may feel they want illicit sex. Some people may feel they need to drink alcohol. Some people may feel they need to smoke cigarettes. Some people cannot give up tea. So, we have four principles. 
But for different people, different things. Sometimes, you know, they say, sometimes people in household life that they don't follow very strictly. But it's different in different situations. But we need four principles. The four pillars of religion are there. The four pillars have to be protected. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity, and truthfulness. So austerity is cultivating humility, giving up intoxication, giving up pride. Cleanliness is destroyed by illicit connection with the opposite sex. And we can associate with the opposite sex subtly and grossly. So both are prohibited. And then mercy is destroyed by killing the animals. Not respecting other forms of life. And truthfulness is destroyed by gambling and lying propaganda. So we follow four principles. Well, my sister also became a devotee. She was initiated by Prabhupada. Hmm. Oh, my mother and father. <laughs> you have to understand, in the Western culture, we're not so attached to mothers and fathers. <laughs> we usually leave home quite early. <laughs> We're quite independent. Prabhupada said the same thing when, you know, I was telling you about Subhag Swami. You know, Bengali, he joined in London. His family sent him to England because he was associating with sadhus in India. So he went to London and became a devotee. And so afterwards, he came back to Mayapur, came back to India to preach in India. And so his mother came to meet him. And so Prabhupada was there. And Prabhupada said, Oh, your son, oh, you want to cuddle your son? Come on. <laughs> Prabhupada taught, he chastised her. He said, come on, grow up. He said, look, he's a man, you know, he's not a boy anymore. <laughs> you know, you cannot be always think, oh, my mother, oh, my father, oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, family attachment, that's not... It's not going to be good for our Krishna consciousness. The best thing you can do for your mother and father is to become a surrendered devotee. What is the best thing you can do? If you get any pious activities from this Krishna consciousness movement, then you can give your pious activities to them. Okay. But if you go home and you're, you're with them, what can you do for them? Can you save them from birth and death? Are they going to listen to you? If you tell them to chant Hare Krishna, will they listen to you? If you tell them don't drink tea, will they do it? No. They are not going to change. They want to change you. They don't want you to be devotee. They want you to be like them. <laughs> so don't be caught. Don't fall into the illusion that you can do anything for them. There was one devotee, maybe you know Giri Raj Swami. 
he was in charge in Juhu for a long time. You know, he's in America now in his old age. And so his father was a big lawyer in America. And he became a devotee. And he came to India in the very early on. The first group of devotees to come to India, they all came. 1970, 1969, 70, they came to India. So his father was a big man, wealthy man, his own lawyer company in America. So he came to see Prabhupada. And he said to Prabhupada, he said, Okay, Swamiji, I want my son back. How much do I have to pay you to get my son back? So Prabhupada said, oh, call, call Giriraj, bring him in. <laughs> so Giriraj came in and, and Prabhupada said, your father wants to take you back to America. And Giriraj said, I won't go Prabhupada. I'm not going to go. He said, my mother and father, <clears throat> they always argue and fight with each other and quarrel. And my sister... She's just, uh, she just flirts around with so many boyfriends and she goes drinking and everything. I'm not going back to that life again. So Prabhupada looked at his father and said, he doesn't want to go. What can I do? <laughs> and so he didn't go. He stayed and he did wonderful service for Srila Prabhupada. But if he'd gone back, what could he have done? Nothing. Okay? Yes, Prabhu? I had a question. Huh? Uh, we gave an example that uh, a very materialistic person. Sometimes by the mercy of a devotee, when he meets that devotee for the first time, by, by some, uh, by unknown chance also, suppose he serves the devotee. Yes. Yet Krishna consciousness is in our heart, but it's awakened. The devotee gives life to that seed of bhakti. The devotee puts that seed in there, puts a seed there into the heart to sprout that bhakti so that it can grow up. You contact the devotee. The devotees, the pure association with the devotees is putting that bhakti to life, bringing that bhakti to life. The seed is there in the heart. But it's brought to life from the contact with the devotee. That he sprout, gets it to sprout, gets it to germinate, brings it to life. Before it's just in the dormant state. But when they contact the devotee, the devotee brings it to life. So he's bringing that seed, putting that seed there, which is in the heart so that it will sprout up. Mm -hmm. But the, you have to still water it, hear and chant. It's not just only that contact with the devotee. The, the person, the devotee themselves, they have to take advantage of that association to hear and chant, water it regularly and pull out the weeds. Get rid of all the weeds which are obstructing the growth. The things which are stopping us from developing our bhakti. We have to recognize what are the, ob the obstructions. And that's why this book is so valuable, so important. Prabhupada, Rupa Goswami, they are explaining to us what are the obstacles, what are the things which are obstructing that growth of bhakti. And we have to get rid of them. Then we can properly cultivate the bhakti. Sometimes we may have to listen to non devotees because we are dealing, we are discussing about the 
even when we want to preach, we may have to listen them, their story, their tell them. How, how do we uh, preach them? How do we uh, understand? How do we make ourselves? Uh, well, you have to see, is he going to buy the book or not? If he's going to get the book, okay, we can listen for a little while. Yeah. If he's not going to get the book, I'm so, I'll talk to you another time. <laughs> Don't waste time. So many people are there. People talk too much. They're probably not going to get the book. The people that sell, most sales are quick, you know. But the person, oh, let me talk to you. I want to talk to you. Huh. Don't, don't waste your time. You can spend the whole day talking to people. You never distribute any books. So many people, they, they think they know something. They think they have something to say. They don't know anything. They have nothing valuable to say. We don't gain anything by hearing from them. Sometimes just to be a little polite, okay, okay, yeah. Do you want the book or not? <laughs> if you're not going to get the book, I've got to go. They're not, it means they're not very serious. Somebody gets a book, is serious. Okay? Yes? Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. <laughs>